Paige was uh, family oriented. One of her great desires was to have a family of her own. A nice 30 year old fun loving girl next door. People liked her. May 24th, 1990 was shaping up to be a busy day for Paige Renkoski. She dropped her mother off at Detroit Metro Airport in the morning and stopped by Canton on the way home to have lunch with a friend. After completing her visit, she was going back home to Okemos. And that's when something unusual happened. Something so unusual, investigators are still putting together the pieces 25 years later. Before the Fowlerville exit on Westbound 96, for some reason she pulled over to the side of the road. The key still hanging in the ignition, the car left running. Doors locked except for the driver's side door, which was left open, but no signs of Paige. Why did she stop here? What caused her to stop? No physical damage to the car? It was mechanically sound? Yeah, well, you can see it from here. Which is why when people saw that car sitting on the side of the road, they thought it had merely been abandoned. They called it into police that way, too. They towed the car in, and they didn't record the scene. But something didn't add up. On closer inspection, they found Paige's purse in the car, completely untouched, nothing missing, not even her wallet. And her shoes were found awkwardly jammed beneath the front seat. To find a woman who would go somewhere without her shoes and without her purse, that was extremely unusual. This no longer seemed like a case where Paige had simply walked off on her own or hopped into a friend's car with plans on coming back. Paige Renkoski was missing, and the one piece of evidence they had was towed from the very place they needed to look. Could there have been some trace evidence on the ground there? Signs of a struggle, whatever, tire prints, we don't know. What they did have was her car, first towed, now admitted into evidence and being processed for clues. What they found were prints, a lot of them. Some on the roof, some on the trunk, some on the door. But none of them identified, no matter how many times they ran them through the system. Many of them they believe are family or neighbors or friends, innocent hands who touched the car in passing. But that's about it. It's all the physical evidence we really have. And that's almost impossible. That's like a needle in a haystack. Really. Yeah, that's, that's beyond a needle in a haystack. That's, that's a, needle, a needle in a hay field. While investigators poured through what physical evidence they did have, search crews scoured the scene. They brought in tracker dogs and, and found nothing. Minutes turned into hours, which turned into days, and still no sign of Paige. What started as an abandoned vehicle turned missing person report was now an abduction homicide. Since it happened around 3 in the afternoon on a busy highway right before Memorial Day weekend, there was no shortage of witnesses and no shortage of variations to their stories. You have to imagine you're passing something on the freeway at 70 miles an hour. You're going to get different stories about what they saw. And the forensic sketches prove it. Five men, five completely different looks reported in completely different vehicles. Everything from a maroon minivan to a pickup truck. Thousands of tip calls, thousands of theories. It was this just a crime of opportunity. That they were able to get her pulled over, very possible. Also possible, a number of other working theories. Among them, that someone purposely crashed into her car to get her to pull over, or that she may have been duped by someone pretending to be a police officer. It looks like that she was taken quickly. Thousands of tips, but no clear answers. And the case went cold. We won't give up. We're going to keep doing this. Investigator Michael Freyer came back from retirement to work this cold case with two other retired cops he's known since junior high. You know, we're dedicated to do this. You know, you know, we're not in it for the money. We're not in it to advance our careers. We've already had our careers. We're in it to do the right thing because, you know, this, this crime needs to be solved. Together, they've worked the case for the past five years, collaborating with the FBI, state police, and other cold case teams following up on every tip that comes their way. My heart of hearts, this is why I was put on this earth, to, to solve this case. And then, in June of 2011, they got one step closer to doing just that. A handwritten letter, anonymous, two pages, left on a detective's desk, complete with a map of what the author said was Paige's burial site on some property in Conway Township. If we can find out where she is, we can find out who did it. They brought in cadaver dogs. They're probably going to be looking for the scent of bones. If she's buried, there will be some decomp scent in the earth itself. And got a hit. The dog signaled for human remains, possibly pages, 
but after five hours of digging. We failed to uh, find any evidence of Paige. Uh, so as of today, she's still missing. Another dig would follow, so would more searches with those cadaver dogs, billboards, even a cold case Facebook page, but still nothing. We know there's somebody out there that knows. And it's going to take one person that's going to make it all come together. As for her mother, artists. I hope during my lifetime that I finally will have an answer and that, that the person who was responsible is brought to justice. And there's perhaps no one else who wants that more than Detective Freyer. I don't want them to get too comfortable because we're not going away. And, you know, they're going to make a mistake. And when they do, we'll be there. I got a brand new pair of handcuffs that I got just for them.